So one of the cornerstones of digital logic that we'll be talking about is this idea of oops, Boolean algebra. Um, so Boolean algebra um, is how we can work with logic circuits sort of on paper and in a theoretical sense. Um, so the cornerstone of Boolean algebra or that we'll be concerned about is a number of these rules and identities and you have a copy of this. Um, and basically what these tell you are how we can simplify a Boolean equations. Um, Boolean equations are just ones where we have these Boolean variables say A or B are frequently we'll be using. And each of those is either the state true or the state false. Um, and that's the only possible values for them. So we've already dealt with, um, in logic gates, a few examples of how these Boolean variables are used. Um, so we have the example of the what looks like the plus symbol is Boolean or. Uh, the dot is a Boolean and, and so forth. So there's a number of rules that you'll, you have on that sheet, and you should loosely know in any exam, you'll always have these as a reference, so don't straight out memorize all of them. Um, and a lot of them are fairly basic, and you can sort of derive them simply. So if we consider operations with zero and one first, um, if we were given an OR gate, as we had here, we can say if we have an input A, um, if this is zero, then the output is always going to be A, because A or with zero is always A. If the input was one, um, you know that one or with anything is always one. So A or with one uh, just gives you one. Uh, likewise, we can say the same things for an AND gate. Um, we know that if we have an input A and the other input is zero, the output will always be zero because zero and one is zero and zero and zero is zero. So it will always be the case. Um, if this input is one, then obviously the output will be, will just follow A because if A is one, one and one equals one, if one and zero equals zero, um, where this is A. So these come about pretty simply, and then we can start to build up upon them. So these rules, for example, say that if we have um, a gate, either an OR gate or an AND gate, um, if we connect both the inputs together, the output is simply the same as the inputs. So this is just saying that if you have A or with A, the output is always A. And again, this comes about um, pretty easily from the truth table because if one of these inputs is always the same, um, the output will always be the same. So if we have a, if these A and B are tied together, if we have zero, we'll go here. If we have one, we'll go here. Um, and same, basic same idea for the AND gate. Uh, the complementary rules are one such that if we have an input, um, we'll do the AND first. And we have one of the inputs is inverted. What you'll find is that the output is always one. Should it be zero? Is it always? Uh, four. Yes. Yeah. Good catch. Um, so again, yeah, and if we go through the truth table, we should see that that should, in fact, have been zero. Um, again, if you have A and B, Y, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, um, 
what you'll see is that, for example, if you had a zero here, um, and we connect to both of them together, we'll have zero, we'll have one, so the output will, as you expect, be zero. Likewise, if you have one here, you'll go one, zero, um, and the output will still be zero, because you never get into the case where they're the same. For the OR gate, um, it's sort of the opposite case, in that these are one. It's always going to be one, because you'll have A and B, um, and one is always going to be one, and one's always going to be zero, so the output's always one. Um, so we need to fix that. Table. So another rule we'll have is the involution rule, which is just simply saying that if you have a number of not gates connected together, um, they cancel each other out. So we can start with one not gate and have a, a complement. Um, if we connect two of them together, we'll end up with this case. Um, a, a complement, a complement, complement. So obviously the output here is, as you expect, the same as the input. Um, and this can be extended basically to say that if there's any even number of not gates connected together, um, the output is always the same. So this output here is equivalent to just one not gate. Um, and if we connect a fourth one, the output is then again equivalent to the input. <laughs> the commutative rules simply say that it doesn't matter which way around we apply um, and or or. So again, this is quite simple from the truth tables because if we have A or B, um, what you saw is that the lines where A and B differ, these two lines, uh, the output's always the same, whether it's for an OR gate or for an AND gate. Um, and this applies as well if you have more than just two inputs, obviously. So if we have a plus B plus C plus D, you can say that's, you can rearrange that however you want. Um, and although these rules seem really simple, you kind of use them to build up larger rules later. Um, in a similar fashion, it doesn't matter which order we apply and and or, so the associative rules. Um, so what this is saying is that this, if we have, for example, a circuit built as such, um, it's equivalent to a circuit where these two inputs are or together first, or that input is. Um, and it's also equivalent to just one big OR gate with all three inputs. So it doesn't matter which way you draw it, it's all the same. Or which way you do it when you're actually manipulating these Boolean um, functions. The distributive rules are where everything starts to differ a tiny bit from normal algebra. So up until now, you could effectively consider the OR um, similar to a, a Boolean sum and the AND similar to a Boolean multiply in terms of uh, how they function. The AND is similar to 1 times 1 is 1. Um, 1 times 0 is only 0. The distributive <laughs> rules, though, do differ slightly. So as we can see here, um, what we're saying is that if we have A ANDed with B plus C, um, this is similar in that you can distribute the AND inside the brackets. Um, so if you want to view sort of how, how we consider this, you could say we could build a circuit where we have B and C um, and A and to get the final output. But these, and these rules are saying that it's the equivalent um, if instead you move the AND gate in front um, 
and do it this way. So here we would have A, B, A, C, um, and then the final output. So those are equivalent. What differs a little um, is that for the OR gate, it's also distributed in the exact same way. Um, so obviously you can't do this with regular math. You can't distribute a sum inside the brackets. Um, but here, that's exactly what we do. So we say that A plus or A OR with B and C is the same thing as A or B anded with A or C. Um, and again, we can consider a gate type representation of this, where we have a nice AND gate um, with inputs B, input C, and the output is OR with A. Um, so that's this circuit here. But if you want, you can move that OR gate in front of the AND gate. And in doing this, um, you should have the exact same logical representation. A, B, Let's see, get the idea. Um, so those are the distributive rules. So a quick note, the order of operation, again, is um, very similar to regular arithmetic in that the AND, if it's written like this, what we would perform is we would first perform the NOT, um, we would then perform the AND, and finally the OR. For the most part, we'll be trying to always add brackets um, to show distinctly what the expected order of operations is. So in such a circuit, you could consider it synthesized, for example. Um, the first thing you do is you have B, take the inverse. Um, next we have C, which we AND. So this term right here is B, Complement and it was C, um, and finally we OR that. With A. So when we're talking uh, in Boolean, we'll later um, kind of talk about this in more detail, but each one of these uh, we'll call a literal, sort of as a um, a section of the Boolean formula. And it's also the literal can, in circuit form, for example, this literal B complement ANDED with C is comprised of everything inside that little box there. Um, so some other rules that we'll show, one of them is called the absorption rule. Um, so this is if we have a anded with, or A or with A and B. And the result is just the same as the input. So you can think about this. Um, like such. And this is the same as this line there. Um, so what we're saying is the output here is just the exact same as the input A. So B is more or less ignored. Um, and you can consider that because, say, if A is 1, um, 1 goes here, 1 goes there, and the output will always be 1 in this case, no matter what B is, because one side of this OR gate is 1. Um, if the input 0, 0 will go here, um, and the output will always be 0 because the output of this AND gate will always be zero, um, regardless of what B is. And in a similar way, A ended with A or B also gives you A, I believe, and not B. And we can show that uh, 
um, in a similar way. So if we have this type of um, circuit, so if we have an input of one here, um, this input's always one, this input's always one, and that's always one, regardless of what B is, because this, uh, the output of this OR gate will always be one, since one input's one. If this is zero here, um, the result is that you get a zero at one input of the AND gate, um, and the output will then always be zero, regardless of what the other input is. So that's how the absorption rules can be seen. Um, so the consensus rule, this one's a bit longer, but again, it um, can be used to simplify certain things. So we can draw it out in schematic form, um, the unsimplified version. So if we have an AND gate with A and B, um, we have an AND gate with inverted A, and I'll use the dot notation. Um, and it was C, and finally, if this final gate um, has C anded with B, um, then we just OR all of those. So what this is equivalent to is the second half of it shown. If we can actually greatly reduce this um, just to an AND gate here, an AND gate here, and an OR gate. Um, so if we have A, B, those are ANDed, um, and this is that literal there. And if we have invert A, um, not A, and C, uh, we put it into that OR gate. So this is that literal there. Um, and then we have the final output. So these two are equivalent according to the consensus. Uh, De Morgan's theorem is probably one of the most useful ones, and we'll use it quite a bit in this class. And De Morgan's is a way of converting between NAND and NOR gates directly. Um, so this is very handy for creating other types of gates out of just NAND gates or just NOR gates. So what it's saying is that if we have a NOR of a NOR gate with a whole bunch of inputs, so say we have these three inputs, A, B, C, um, and it's extendable to however many you need, um, this is exactly equivalent to a AND gate with each input inverted. Um, so if we have A, B, C, and we just invert each input to the AND gate, um, those two are equivalent. So for example, if you want to replace a NOR gate with NAND gates, um, you can build inverters from NAND gates, pass it through one big NAND gate, and then invert the output of the NAND gate to get you that equivalent circuit built with um, NOR gates. Likewise, if we have a multi-input NAND gate, as shown in the second one here, um, you can just replace it with a multiple input OR gate with each input inverted. So this is D. Morgan's theorem. There's a few more rules. Um, the simplification rules. And these are derived from some of the earlier theorems. Um, so I won't go over them in too much detail, but there's a number of these you'll find. And if you look in different resources, they list other ones too. Um, most of these are from the class notes PDF. Uh, so if you go there, they have the same table. Um, and the simplification rules are just general theorems that you can be used if you see specific uh, forms when you're going through. So if you want to prove some of these um, rules, I'll prove sort of uh, this one here, for example. One way to do it, there's two ways. 
Um, the first is perfect induction. So perfect induction is a really straightforward way to do it where you don't really know the underlying theory, but you can prove for absolute certainty that it's true. And we can do this in Boolean um, algebra because we can apply every possible input. With a normal mathematical function, um, you know, you can't just plug in a bunch of numbers and say, yeah, that works for five of them, close enough. Uh, because there could be other cases where it doesn't work. But here we have a finite number of input possibilities. For this two input, we have these uh, four input possibilities, for example. So if I have this that I'm saying, okay, this is true, prove it by per perfect induction, uh, we can just write out each literal. So the complement of B is 1, 0, 1, 0. Um, now if we OR A and B complement, so or these two to get that. Um, so A and B complement. So we just write down 1, 0, 1, 1. And then the final output is just the AND of this and B. Um, so the AND here will be 0, 0, one one, um, which yeah. Where did I make a mistake somewhere? Okay, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. I see where it came from. So, and this is the same as the AND gate that we where you'd expect. So, the truth table of an AND gate is zero 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 one. Um, so that's proof by perfect induction. You can go through any of the other theorems if you really want to check them that way. A sort of better example of how we can do it is you can actually derive the identities using other theorems. Um, so here's an example. A plus A, A ORed with A and B is equal to A, um, which I believe is one of yeah, the simplification theorems here. So um, the first thing we do is, and there's multiple ways to solve this. I'll show you two of them. There's probably others, depending what order you apply the theorems in. Um, the first thing we'll use is identity 15, the distributive function. Um, and we'll distribute A, uh, and we'll get A ORed with A ANDed with A or B. Um, next, we'll use identity 3 um, that says A plus A, this point here, is the same thing as A. So this was with 15. Um, so we'll say A or A plus B. And that was due to identity 3. Um, Next, we'll use identity 14. Um, yes, sorry, just checking. So we use identity 14, again, distributive rule, um, except this time for on the and instead of the or. So this gives us a and a plus a and b. So as you can see, we've just slowly been rewriting it in different uh, in different formats. Um, now, if we look at 6 and 7, uh, we say A and A is A. And then we'll use that um, to plug in A is equal to A and 1. So we'll then have A and 1 is the same thing as A plus B, or A a and 1 ORed with A and B. Um, finally, we can use 14 again, sort of in reverse here. And what we end up with is A and 1 plus B. Um, so here, I've gone from this distributed form um, to the condensed form. So I now have this more condensed form here. 
Now we also know that um, 1 plus b, according to rule 2, is the same thing as just 1. So then we have a and 1. So that's using 2. Finally, using rule 6, um, a and 1 is just equal to a. And that's the final answer. So a and 1 is equal to a. And that's um, how we could derive, for example, that specific identity, starting from what does A or A and B equal, and you can find the final answer. Um, again, there's shortcuts to do it, other ways to do it if you um, apply identities in different orders. So that's not necessarily the only way to prove it. And that's the steps written out. So we can also use it. Um, and this is where it will become of interest to it, us, is to simplify circuits. So to begin with, we have this circuit example that I've written down. So the first thing to do is to translate this into the Boolean algebra form. Um, so we have inputs A here, inputs B here, um, A here again, B here again. Uh, this input will become a complement. So then we can say there's a literal here that's a ORed with b, and then the whole thing is uh, the inverse taken, because this is a NAND gate. Um, here, again, remember it's NOR. Um, we can say a complement ORed with b, and then the complement of the whole thing is taken. And then finally, we have a OR gate at the output. So the final output, F, um, we can say F is equal A and B OR with A complement OR with B, the whole thing complemented. Um, so that's basically how we start. So we now have this written out in Boolean algebra. Um, so one way you could do it is you could write out a truth table for the resulting circuit and try to figure out the simplified version. Uh, it'll work for very basic examples. It might work for this, but in general it's going to be a lot of work. So instead we'll use those Boolean identities um, to actually simplify this whole circuit and then we can synthesize it again. So Let's take an example. So the function I had written was f equals a and b um, or with a complement and b and the whole thing complemented. So for example, I'll use some of the basic operations. So um, using 19 and 20, so I'm going to be using D Morgans here. Um, remember, if I have this NAND, I can replace this um, with A plus B, and both of them are complemented. So that's one application of D Morgans. Um, and I'm also going to apply it to this one here. So the only thing you have to remember is one of the inputs is complemented for the second application of it. So again, if I have um, A plus B, that's the same thing as A and B. Um, so that's D Morgan's theorem. So here, when we apply it, um, because we already have one of the inputs complemented, all we'll get is A and B complement instead. Um, and again, there's still the OR in the middle, and we'll add brackets. So that's using 1920. Um, so when I have that reference to 1920, it's just meaning on your sheet. Um, remember, there's one error that we'll have to fix. Uh, using 19 and 20. So the next step um, is we can use the distributive principle, which is 14. So. A complement um, 
Um, and based on the operations with one, that we know this one is always going to be one. Um, so a complement plus one Um, and I think what's that number two? Um, and again, we have another operations with zero and one here, so we can say a complement ended with. Um, so finally, we have a complement ORed with b complement, uh, and this is the final application of De Morgan's theorem to, to give us the result. Um, and this is sort of the other, remember if we have A plus B, it's equivalent to NAND. So what this is saying is that the final function of that whole circuit is actually just equivalent to a single NAND gate. Hmm? Oh, sorry, yeah, NAND. What I said and what I wrote did not agree. Um, so it's it's equivalent to a single NAND gate. Um, so that whole schematic can just be reduced to that. So that's the power of using this type of step-by-step -step approach. Um, so we can use it, as you can see, to just simplify entire circuits. So I think that's actually all I'm going to cover today, to not go through too much. Um, I'll let people copy that down and do a quick review. Uh, remember to change on your sheet, and I'll change it online too, one of the identities we had wrong. The sheet goes online, I think. Yeah, the sheet Is it? Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, oh, perfect, yep. Yeah. So just the slide. Um, yeah, so quick review. Um, Boolean algebra. Boolean algebra is just where we have true and false for each operation. Um, we'll also use one and zero. Zero representing false, one representing true. Um, so that's where we have these Boolean variables. We'll often use ABC, it can be anything. Um, there's a number of basic Boolean identities we use. Uh, and again, if you look in different locations, there's different lists of them. So when I reference a number, number 20, um, it's only relative to this sheet. There's no universal law of number 20 is always this. Um, but the names of them are the same, D. Morgans and all that stuff. Um, you can derive them by often just thinking about the schematic symbols we were using before. Um, and based on these, you can come up with a number of pretty simple ones, operations with zero and one. Um, if you or anything with one, it's always one. If you and anything with zero, it's always zero. Um, likewise for anding and oring with other combinations. Um, if you or a Boolean variable ORed with itself or a Boolean variable anded with itself always gives you the original. Um, A Boolean variable anded with the complement of itself will always give you zero, and if you think about the gate, it's because one input's always zero. Likewise, if you OR it with itself, um, the output is always going to be one, because one input is always one. Uh, involution is just how we say if you have a whole bunch of double negatives, so to speak, so a whole bunch of inverters connected together or complement operations, um, the result will either end up being the same as the input, um, that is to say, A or A complement. So if we have an even number of inverter operations or an even number of complements, um, the output is just A because they cancel each other out. If you have an odd number, then you end up with a complement of A. Um, commutative rules say that it doesn't matter for a single operation um, which way we rearrange terms. So A or B is the same thing as B or A. Likewise, A and B, B and A. doesn't matter. Even if you have this for multiple input gates or multiple inputs. Um, 
associative rules say that if we have the same operation um, in sequence, so A or with B and C uh, is the same as first or in A and B and then finally or in A with C. So in a schematic representation, uh, you can think of it this way where it doesn't matter which side the gate is on or it's the same thing as a multiple input gate. So here we have a three input OR gate. Um, distributive rules differ from if you're used to just thinking of regular algebra and Boolean algebra being very similar. Um, and you have to take note of that because you can actually distribute with an OR, which is represented by the plus um, here. So just take a note of the fact that here I've distributed this A um, into these two terms, which are then ANDed together. And that is the exact same. Um, the distributive rule for the AND gate, again, follows similar to how you might think about multiplication, where we have B or C, and we've distributed the A inside it. Um, that's probably just the one thing that you really want to look out for, because it can catch you off guard if you're going really fast, is that you can distribute like that. And when you're simplifying, what you'll often um, see is that instead of going this way, uh, you'll have you know some number of terms like this, and just look for having that common term that you can take out. And again, you can take it out for both the AND and the OR operation. Um, order of operations, we normally will apply an inversion first, and the inversion you, do, you notice it will apply directly to one variable. Um, or, for example, if we have B and C like that, then it means the inversion is applying to the result of B and C first. Um, if it's otherwise not written, so if you just have A or with B and C, um, the AND operation has higher precedence. So the way I've written the bottom here, um, this would mean we first and B and C and then or A into that input. So B and C and then we or A. Um, some of the simplifications so the absorption rule um, shows that if I have A either and with or or with a and B, or A or B, the result basically is B doesn't matter and it just ends up as A. So again, these can come in handy when you're simplifying longer um, diagrams. Consensus rule. Um, erase all this stuff. So the consensus rule can let you eliminate some terms when you have it um, set up in this way. So here we have the complement of A ended with C. Um, as well as A and B. So basically what you're looking for in the consensus rule is this sort of arrangement where A is involved in, the complement of A is involved in one term, B is involved in another term, and A and B are anded together. Um, and if you see that, then you can reduce it to this form. De Morgan's theorem, it will be one of the most important, um, and you effectively should know it because it should be used well enough. And it's to say that if we have um, a number of OR operations and the comp we use the complement of them, we can then replace that with an AND operation where each individual input is complemented. Um, so sometimes when you're using it, what you might need to do is rearrange it such that you do have this um, inversion added, because obviously you can double invert stuff. So if you just had A and B and C, and for some reason you wanted to get it to the, um, the other form, you can say, okay, that's fine. I'll just double invert, which is the same as um, A or B or C, and then this is equivalent to that, the whole thing inverted. Um, so you can use them in that way too, of course. Um, likewise, if we start with an AND, uh, or start with an AND, we can break that down into an OR gate where instead of the output being 
complemented as in the NAND gate. It's just each individual input is complemented. Um, these are some of the simplification rules which are repeated and you can, when you're deriving these rules, you can derive them either by perfect induction, where we consider every possible input to the function, which we can only do really with Boolean algebra, um, because in Boolean algebra, it's either true or false, and that's it. That's all you get. Um, so if there's a two-input function, as in two different variables are used, then with four inputs, we can try every possible result and just check that it works. Um, so here, again, zero is false, one is true. If you want to derive them, um, you can do that as well. So we can just go through each individual identity and derive um, sort of the results. And that's it written out again. And again, depending which way you do this derivation, you might get um, sort of a different form than I've shown here. Um, for example, this is the one I did earlier. I could actually jump directly, I believe, from this format, um, which is described. Yeah, so here I have done a bunch of steps in the middle. Um, if we know, if we use 6 directly, a and 1 is equal to a, I can just directly say, okay, a is equal to a and 1. Um, therefore, this whole thing is equal to a and 1, or with a and b, um, which is, you'll notice what I have written right here. So doing all these intermediate steps was actually more just an exercise to show you a bunch of ways to apply the rules. In reality, you could have, if um, you saw it, just jump directly to this step and then to the answer. So. Again, there is going to be different ways of deriving the same things. Um, and what we'll really use it for is simplifying circuits. So if we end up with, either you start with a circuit, you can create a simplified version of it. So in this one, I've simplified this circuit down to a single NAND gate. Um, or frequently, we'll show that if you want to design a circuit, you'll have it written out in Boolean algebra form. Um, and then you can take that form, manipulate it, and get the simplest possible representation of your circuit. Um, and that means you're using the least number of gates most of the time, or it might mean you only want to use NAND gates, or only want to use NOR gates, or only want to use some simple gate. Um, so if you want more, there's a few examples from the book. Chapter 9, again, goes through all this in really great example um, and the course notes posted on the website have some of these examples and they also will have the same chart as you have on the handout so if you lose that or whatever it's there um, so that's all for today and tomorrow